Okay, well, hello and welcome. Today, for the first time, I'm actually joined by a guest. I am joined by Jonathan Rushbrook, who is... Is it fair to say that you're a historian? Um, the pretentious part in me says yes. The, the technical part in me says no. I, I have master's degrees, but no PhD, so... But I guess you don't have to have a PhD to be a historian. Well, what would you say, though, is, like, your biggest area of history? Um... Modern European right wing intellectual thought. Right wing? Okay. Now, if we gotta, maybe we can use that as a starting point because there's one thing I have to ask. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump. Uh huh. He gets called names like Nazi, yeah. fascist, r right winger, mm -hmm. also conservative Christian. Like, what is Donald Trump? Um, he's a populist, I'd, but in the in the contemporary sense. He, uh, I mean, the problem with these labels, specifically fascism, which is the thing that I really narrowed in on uh, in my research, is that it's such a contested term by academics. Like, um, you know, there are, there are even some scholars who maintain that you can't even define fascism outside of the Italian experience because each national movement has had its own idiosyncrasies and they've really they divert from a general understanding of fascism uh quite a lot from in from each other okay on that note can i ask though like is there anything fascist going on in america with the trump administration because the left yeah. really likes to talk about that yeah. a lot in my experience well in my experience in my opinion absolutely not mm -hmm. um when they're when they liken him to hitler they're really doing a disservice um, to everybody because it's it just cheapens genuine, actual, real comparisons to Hitler um, that can't that might be made in the future towards other people. But I do not, yeah, I do not think that Trump is fascistic or or anything along those lines. I guess like um, I've heard some. I mean, there are countless Nazi slurs have been thrown mm -hmm. at Donald Trump. But what would you say about some of the criticisms where it's like they say that he is trying to scapegoat the Muslims and the Hispanics mm -hmm. the way that Hitler scapegoated the Jews? Um, you know, I'm, like uh, calling Mexicans rapists or the, saying he wants a ban on Muslims? Well, he, he didn't. He didn't say either of those things. He said that there were some, he said that a lot of illegal immigrants are rapists, which is true. Um, they do commit crimes. Not all of them. Which is what he said. He said not all of them. Some of them are great people. True. But a lot of them represent a risk factor, in my opinion. So clearly I'm coming at this from the right. Similarly, he's never said anything about a Muslim ban. But the fact is, again, is about a risk, risk factor. There aren't too many Christian jihadists. So, I mean... So I so he's not scapegoating either, and it would be in its uh, the 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 worries that uh, conservative Americans feel, in my opinion, are largely justified. But like from this point onward, what is going to be the future of the Republican Party? Is it going to be something that is like Donald Trump, something like Mike Pence? Is it going to be something like Jeff Flake from Arizona yeah. when they're going to be closer to the center? Yeah. What's the future of the Republican Party going to be? Um, I wish I knew. I don't. But I do think... So, full disclosure, I voted for Trump and I plan on voting for him again. Um, I Do I have reservations about his personality? Absolutely. But me, like a lot of other Republican voters, made a rational decision based on an either-or scenario. And in my opinion, we chose right. If anything, for those two extra conservative Supreme Court justices who are strict constructionists. But there's but, a very big thing to say about that because right now, looking back, even the Democrats were like, we didn't want Hillary. She just happened to yeah. win. Furthermore, they openly know that she cheated. Oh, well, yeah. And that's, I yeah, mean, I think that's such a, I, oh, it, I'm sorry. Continue. Well, it was just like, it was a very bad choice to put her up, mm -hmm. you know, for, for president. And like, yes, yeah, SNL really cozied up to her, but yeah. the Dems didn't want her. Well... I mean, maybe, but in in but the mainstream establishment did. I mean, Donna Brazil lied through her teeth, and she did supply questions 
uh, DNC questions to Hillary Clinton's campaign when they were going to be doing the debates. So um, I right. personally would have wanted Sanders to win, if only because, like, like Ron Paul, I do think that he's one of those people that has uh, at least ideological integrity. And even though I disagree with him on so many things, um, it's at least refreshing to see somebody who is genuine, or at least as genuine as a politician can be. Right, and I think that's a big thing, because when I said that a lot of people didn't want Hillary, I don't think they wanted the dishonest side of Hillary. Mm -hmm. Yes, maybe they um, like some of the things that she talked about, and they went along with her, mostly because she they thought she was the best chance of mm -hmm. winning. But no, I don't think they actually wanted that dishonest politician who was mm -hmm. involved with the destabilization of Libya, mm -hmm. and also her role in starting, you know, perhaps the Syrian civil war. Mm -hmm. That gets a little conspiratorial, though, so <laughs> we don't know all the facts in that, but... You know, thing Libya, the refugee crisis. Mm. She was heavily involved in all of those things. They don't really come at it from that angle, though. That's more just like, um, well, she wasn't Trump, so yeah. Well, but I mean, most. Pe I don't know if that's necessarily. I mean, after the fact, when she had already won the mm. nomination, then yes, yeah, maybe there was a, a feeling of, oh, well, she's not Trump. However. For the longest time, nobody believed that Trump was going to win the nomination. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> no, like, I didn't. I thought, oh, this is just a little media ruse, and one yeah. of the other politicians, maybe Cruz, mm -hmm. maybe even John Kasich or Rubio would take over, mm -hmm. and they would win, because what we saw with Trump, did you, I mean, like, would you agree with this, that, like, he went kind of up in the poll numbers, mm -hmm. and he stayed up? Yeah, oh, yeah. It wasn't like in the, where it's like, you know, in the, when people were going up against Mitt Romney, like Newt Gingrich and Herman Cain, it's going up and mm -hmm. down and up and down. I think I think very early on Trump kind of was able to what's the term gauge and then utilize in a practical pragmatic but and not necessarily ideologically driven um, point of view that and it allowed him it basically he was able to gauge the Republican voter base and realize just how angry they have been and so frustrated at the Republican Party who has always seemed to concede and play the nice guy of course this is the the Republican talking you know I think it, especially after the um, Blasey Ford issue there's been a lot of talk about whether or not Democrats have been you know to, have they been too weak on certain things and, and too compromising which I think is completely the exact opposite of what they should be thinking but um, anyways, Trump was able to, to kind of um, gain a hold of that, and when people realized that it was okay to be frustrated, and that you have, we now had somebody who was at least willing to rock the boat, um, pe uh, Republican voters decided to take a risk. But on that note, I have to ask you, what do you make of Ted Cruz, who almost had the nomination and still is in the Senate? He might run for president yeah. again post-Trump. Yeah. Um, is he someone who has been too nice? Or like, what would you say about him? I think he, it's not necessarily a question of too nice. For, for me, it's a question of, do we want to get things done? Or do we want to maintain a relative status quo? I'm in favor of building the wall. If it wasn't for Trump talking about building a wall during the primaries, never would have been a real genuine subject of discussion where it could be passed in the near future. Um, so I don't think Trump, or I'm sorry, excuse me, Cruz is a shaker, a mover like... Trump is. Do you think that Cruz is somebody who was just trying to get elected for the sake of winning because he's just like an opportunistic politician? Well, I mean, yeah, I don't think that Trump is any different in that sense. I just think that Trump is a lot smarter. And I think he is a bit of a mercenary ideologically, maybe. I don't know. I mean, it would seem that that's the case considering his earlier uh, libertarian or you know he 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 uh, ran with rupaul i think for the reform party or was it oprah this is years ago donald trump yeah are you talking about in 2000 when he talked yes. about challenging Ch pat buchanan yeah, for the nomination yeah. right and i'm um, in the documentary get me roger stone they mm -hmm. sort of talked about that and that was kind of a plan that roger stone and donald trump concocted to 
take votes away from Pat Buchanan mm-hmm. so that George W. Bush would win because Ross Perot got 8% of the popular vote against mm-hmm. Dole and Clinton. I mean, he uh, took it away from them. Yeah. So they were just like, hey, the Reform Party is killing the Republicans. What are we going to do? So they had to find a way to neutralize Pat Buchanan. Oh, okay, I see. But now you said something very big there, because I wanted to ask you, though, like, as a as a conservative, and mm-hmm. it's also like um, a right-wing historian, mm-hmm. although you said um, some reservations about the term, Yeah. libertarians, mm-hmm. what do you make of their movement? I'm, a, I'm, I'm gun to head, if I had to choose between liberalism in the American contemporary sense or libertarianism, I would take libertarianism 10 out of 10 times. Absolutely. Um, I think Why that, so? I think that it's it's part of it is an aesthetic appeal on two counts. One, it seems like those who um, espouse libertarian ideas and those who run on the platform tend to be uh, very genuine. I agree 100%. And I do maintain that politics, whether we like it or not, is a gut thing first, and then we walk it back to rationalize it. So my gut tells me that that's a good in a kind of like platonic virtue sense and the other reason is that in a world what kind of world would i rather live in a world in which i'm more i'm left to my device my own devices more and regulations and taxes and stuff are out of my out of my hair more um or living in a world in which um the exact opposite is going on where you have a lot of regulation and certain social justice ideas being promulgated more and more i'd pick libertarianism anytime mm-hmm. but like um right now we have seen well it's actually with gary johnson we saw the largest libertarian vote in history. Mm-hmm. He didn't get 5%, which he needed. He got about 3% of the popular vote, 4.4 mm-hmm. million votes. What's going to happen to our two-party system in the future? I know we don't really know yet, but yeah. like making a prediction, like, are we going to get rid of Democrats, get rid of Republicans? Um, what would happen? I mean, I think the Trump Trump's election basically creates a whole new dynamic because the Republican Party is fractured to a certain extent. Um, you have this the, the kind of like the old guard party, um, the Never Trumpers, which is a relatively small movement, but they still have influence. And then you have the more populist, the more um, braggadocious, the more who don't care about other people's feelings. We're going to get this past uh, Trumpers, um, and I think that that may lead to eventual internal conflicts it's the same thing with the democrats although less you know you have um um ocasia cortez and um people of her ilk kind of coming out and springing up out of nowhere it seems on the democratic side and both trumpers and um left leftists a la uh alexandria cortez could lead to the eventual maybe um, breakdown of the parties, and I mean I'd be okay with that. I am I'm a huge fan of the marketplace of ideas, and I've always been okay with the part more parliamentary system, in which you have multiple parties. So personally, I'm not I'm not worried about that. I think that could be. But a there's good a big thing. thing to be saying about people like Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. I mean Bernie Sanders brought a new light to the word socialism Mm -hmm. in America. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is also a democratic socialist. She comes from the Justice Democrat stable, which, you know, is basically concocted by Kyle Kalinske, Cenk Uygur, Mm -hmm. and the remnants of the Bernie campaign. And a lot of people think they might even take over the Democratic Party, but is that a world that Americans would want to live in where our choices would be the Republican Party or just versus socialism? Yeah, and that's the thing, is that... um... I don't think that is what most... I mean, speaking for all Americans, um, speaking for what I think most Americans would feel, I think they would they would feel more comfortable with Trump in office than they would Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Right, right. But we will, And yes, like just in case any trolls are going to the comment sections, yes, we know she's 29. She's not going to be running yes. for president for another... <laughs> what is it? 
I guess six years. Six years, yeah. yeah. But I do do we look for out for that in the future. Um, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez will most likely be the Democratic nominee for president at some point. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like I'm not a Democrat. I left the Democratic Party about five years ago mm-hmm. because they can't get their shit together, and they don't even have a leader. Yeah. And it can't be AOC because she's too young. Mm. She can't even be a senator. Yeah. It's like, and someone was also saying that the Democrats were spending so much time talking about issues, but they didn't even have themselves on the same page. They say like, yeah, we want health care, but universal single payer, Medicare for all. Mm. The voter base yeah. isn't comprehending their message. Well, and I would, I mean, personally, I don't think they actually have much in the way of a message more recently. Um, the past couple of years, it has seemed to have been all about no Trump, yeah. orange man bad. Like, and that's been, I mean, that's been it. So I'm actually surprised they did as well as they did, although they could have done a lot better had, in the midterms had they um, gotten a more coherent message out other than Trump bad. But um, on that note, you're a history guy, mm-hmm. so... Socialism. Mm-hmm. What would that look like if we actually had a socialist America? Not good. I'm not. I'm. I'm against any type of deter- historical determination, determinism, and socialism is just all about breaking down humanity into kind of like economic movers, and I think that's overly simplistic but on a more I guess pragmatic level or more uh, down to earth level insofar as I would be able to describe it I would say that it would be probably even way more regulation than we have now really bad health care nobody I mean you know it's it's telling that despite the fact that maybe not everybody has access to the best health care um, world leaders go to the United States for their health care. They don't go to other countries. The United States has some of the best health care available. And I think that making it so that it's not a profit-driven um, enterprise would risk weakening its ability to provide top-notch health care. And the same thing goes with any other institution. I think some regulation is necessary, sure, but I think that um, socialism is a fundamental evil. Okay, on that note, though, when we have Bernie, Mm -hmm. and now it's expanded into these other things, the Justice Democrats, as well as many people um, who are actually in the progressive talk radio circles, they got this guy, being Bernie, who's saying, Free Mm healthcare, free college, free housing now. Housing is a basic fundamental human right. So they say, how do you argue against that? Because that's difficult to persuade It's super easy, actually. What's that? How do you pay for it? Nobody's able to explain that. Nothing is free. You don't just, you just don't, you're unable to just create a commodity. You know what they're going to say. Well, what are they going to say? Tax, Tax the one percent. Okay, yes, so, yes. so we get, That's so we get, a, so we get. How much is that going to make? I mean, Ben Shapiro did a really great breakdown. I wish I remembered the numbers, but we get. So if we tax the one percent, like let's say we double their taxes, I think it's something like we get a uh, each year. Every person gets the equivalent of about a hundred bucks. How is that going to? That's not going to. It's not going to do anything. Well, as an American on my life. Um... It'd be some gas money. No, <laughs> well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I'd blow it all on McDonald's. I'd be buying fries a hundred times. <laughs> but you, no. you would too, though. You in the audience, you know, you know, you would. But, but does that make sense? Like, I mean, to me, I feel like it's a pretty easily dismantled argument, personally, because I just feel like it's not a long-term solution, and nothing is free. When when people say it's free, they're lying. But. What, and it comes but out this is the entire platform of this enormous growing movement. Uh-huh. Tax the rich yeah. and then give it to the um, not-so-rich, 99% yeah. lumber. That yeah. is their entire platform. Yeah, I know. It's, yeah, it's called theft in some ways. But... Cold theft, wow. <laughs> but um, it's like, should... What would we like? My concern is just that that is going to be the entirety of mm-hmm. the Democratic Party and that... Um, 
no, I mean, of course, just saying that we're going to have free stuff is not going to be very practical, but the problem is their numbers are growing. Yeah. No, I mean, it's scary. <laughs> it's so what, scary. What would, you, what would you recommend to someone, especially the younger people like college students? Mm -hmm. I know you talked about that thing about who's going to pay for it. Yeah. But, like, what would you recommend to people about, you know, learning from history or um, just about kind of a warning to this type of thinking? Oh, um, look at any historical example of socialism ever. Um, Soviet Union, Cambodia. And this bullshit argument that, oh, well, that wasn't implemented properly just doesn't it just doesn't ring true you mean to tell me that these people who read marx up and down didn't know what the hell they were reading i think it's 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 so disingenuous and then for you to be like oh well we can make it better i just I mean, we will do it right this time i think that's just so dumb personally no offense but i just don't uh no, I just well in this is, day and age, I'm sure a lot of people would be very offended by what you say. <laughs> but you know that's okay because this is America, and people are going to get offended. Yeah, well at least for now. <laughs> yes, but um, on that note, it's like when you mentioned some people of Soviet Union mm -hmm. and Cambodia, um, those are thing places that not only had one sort of economic thing, mm -hmm. they also had one religious orthodoxy, which was kind of like a non-religious thing. I mm -hmm. mean, what wasn't Stalin like? I mean, it's kind of a high priest. Yeah, in it some way. Cult. And Pol Pot, of course, yeah. was very much... Um, he wanted a society free from religion. And what do you make of organized religion as a history guy, historian, sort of? Um, it, I mean, it's a little broad of a question. It's are very you, broad, Are yeah. you talking about in the context of uh, uh, communist states? Well, I guess my mo If I had, had to ask you a more specific question, if you take a single belief system mm -hmm. and try to implement it across your entire nation... Yeah. What are the consequences of that? Not good. Um, I think in general. Um, um, you know, it's, a, it's the same thing when it comes to... And this is when I buy much more into uh, libertarianism, you know, because as a Christian, I'm a Christian, you don't want people to come to God under force. It has to be through free will. And so forcing people into um, moral lifestyles when they don't really think you know believe it that's that's tyrannical um similarly when you force people into kind of an atheist worldview i think it's also it's it's bad i'm kind of on the fence as to whether or not i would buy into whether or not stalin pol pot etc were parts of a of a religious thing i think that's sometimes used by leftist historians to whitewash um socialist ideology um what would um stop what religion would stalin and pol pot be part of well atheism oh okay, okay i know that a lot of people don't consider that religious but i am of this of the school that any type of worldview that you have can potentially have certain religious connotations when you use that as an article of faith and that is what essentially um, socialism is in a lot of ways. Socialism is a religion, you would say? Yes, in some ways, absolutely. Um, you can look at it kind of like comparing it to, well, let's say, let's not say socialism. Let's, although you, certainly elements of socialism. But let's just say far left-wing thought, which yes. includes socialism, um, anarcho, syndicalism, etc., it has this monolinear time, time scale that shows the world in one fallen state and then it's leading towards a utopia. Now, place that upon any major world religion, Abrahamic at least, and what do you have? It's a, it's a Abrahamic religion. Well, yeah, and even some of maybe some of the Dharmic religions are also come from there, maybe like I'm, Jainism. Yeah, maybe. Or... I'm not familiar enough with those to really opine, but... Well... On that note, it's kind of just like, I mean, do you think, though, that, um, is it just because, are you saying it's a religion because they believe in something, or is it because they are believing in a utopian worldview? It's, it's more, it's more the utopian worldview, mm -hmm. right? I mean, like, you can, you can believe something, but you don't necessarily want to die for it because it's not going to lead to something greater. Is being a utopian impossible? Like, is that an impossible goal to set? Oh, I mean, being a utopian, anybody can be a utopian. But yeah, what if you mean like... Uh, like achieving it in your lifetime. Oh, yeah, no, that's... I mean, I... 
theologically believe that's impossible um, outside of, um, you know, Christ coming back. And I don't believe that that is something, you know, that's, that is another thing about left-wing thought versus right-wing thought, is that the left thinks that man can be perfected. Right-wing thought, because of its origins largely in kind of a pessimistic religious worldview, believe that even if they're not going to term it like this, it's fundamentally they believe it's a fallen world. It's flawed. Um, and it's imperfectible. Not perfectible. Okay, we have about 90 seconds left, so okay. if you could, um, in the last minute, once again, to Americans, if you mm -hmm. just had 60 seconds to say one thing to the American people, what would you say? Uh, MAGA, vote Trump 2020. <laughs> <laughs> all right, very nice. And All right, well, thank you for participating in this here. And um, once again, if anybody has anything that they would like to contribute, if you have any sort of challenges that you'd like to throw out, or if you would have any questions, comments, concerns, absolutely anything to say at all, you can drop a comment below. And let's expand the discussion a little bit more. Nothing wrong with, you know, just kind of speaking your mind on a channel like this. And we'll talk to you guys next time. Jonathan, thank you for participating. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Until next time.